With every new study, Tyrannosaurus rex just seems to become more and more dangerous. In this video, we'll explore the biological factors that made T. rex such a deadly animal. Some of this will change in the future with new information, but as of 2023, here's what we have on the Tyrant Lizard King. Perhaps T. rex's most famous sense is that of olfaction, or smell. While we don't have the knowledge or technology to precisely measure how potent its sense of smell would have been in life, a 2009 study confirmed that it had larger olfactory bulbs than other large theropods. Ten years later, another study calculated its olfactory bulb to cerebral hemisphere ratio, which is used to measure scent capacity in extant birds. Tyrannosaurus ended up scoring twice as high as a turkey vulture. Turkey vultures can detect minuscule amounts of volatile gases while flying hundreds of feet in the air, which is how they track corpses from miles away. That gives us an idea of how difficult it would have been to hide from Tyrannosaurus, even if it couldn't see you. And if it could? Well then, good luck. T-Rex had enhanced reflexes coordinating rapid eye and head movements, allowing it to track quick prey and react at high speeds in survival situations. According to Stevens 2006, it also had better binocular vision than a hawk, allowing it to accurately gauge depth across a wide range. And Dr. Stig Walsh, a Scottish paleontologist, argues that T-Rex likely had sharp color vision and potentially could see in the ultraviolet spectrum like many modern birds. Then there's its hearing. Tyrannosaurs as a group possessed unusually elongate cochlear ducts, which are associated with especially sharp hearing. While it could have detected a wide range of sounds with high acuity, it specialized in low-frequency sounds like the rumbling bellows that it likely used to communicate with other members of its species. This is probably what most of you clicked on this video for, and I can't say that I blame you. T-Rex is famous for its monstrous size, and we can confidently say that right now, based on current estimates and specimens, it was the most massive terrestrial predator known to science. It averaged between 7 and 8 metric tons, and based on recent GDI analyses by experts like Fernoy, Random Dinos, and Scott Hartman, the largest specimens blew past 9 tons and pushed 10. For comparison, the largest terrestrial predator nowadays is the polar bear, which maxes out at 680 kilograms. That's a fifteenth of the weight of a big T-Rex. Then, of course, there's that study by Dave Hone and John Mallon that argued that the biggest T-Rex statistically possible would have weighed 15 tons which is an additional 50% increase from the largest specimens we have. It is important to note that that statistic would also apply to every other large dinosaur with comparable population dynamics. Then there are the biomechanical questions of a predatory biped attempting to function at that scale. And, well, right now it's safer to stick with 10 tons for the most massive T-Rex specimens, and we should wait for bigger skeletons before we go too crazy. The point is that T-Rex is currently regarded as the biggest land predator in history, and it's not that close of a contest. Yes, it does indeed appear that T-Rex could bite through your car and munch you in the driver's seat. Of course, it wouldn't do that since it was a very polite creature, but various biomechanical analyses over the years have given it a bite force range between 8,000 and 57,000 newtons. It simply pulverized the bones of whatever unfortunate creature it chose to eat that day. Its broad, deep skull served as an excellent host for muscle attachment points that allowed it to grossly outclass all other theropods which tended to have relatively thin skulls and teeth designed for slicing rather than pulverizing. Tyrannosaurus really was in a class of its own when it comes to offensive power. You'd expect that this category would be a weakness for such an enormous animal. And you'd be right. A creature this big isn't going to win any races against speed-based predators like wolves and cheetahs, but it was still the best in its weight class. Sellers et al. 2017 concluded that T-Rex's skeleton would only have been able to handle a fast walk of about 12 miles an hour. While that may sound slow, according to Strava, an average person jogging is about half that speed. A sprinting athlete going at top speed is around 18 miles an hour. Of course, T-Rex's deep chest, large lungs, and supplementary air sacs would have allowed it to maintain this pace for a very long time, meaning that it would still probably chase you down. It would be blasphemous of me to discuss Tyrannosaur athleticism without mentioning Snively et al. 2019. This study analyzed rotational inertia in theropods and discovered that Tyrannosaurs as a group were twice as efficient as other theropods of their same size when it came to quick turns. For battle fanatics, that means that T-Rex would significantly outperform any theropod close to its mass. Its ability to move quickly, combined with its enhanced reflexes mentioned earlier, make it a deadly combatant, which was exactly what it needed when hunting living tanks like Ceratopsians. There are multiple ways of estimating the intelligence of an extinct animal, but not all are created equal. Encephalization quotient, or EQ, is based on how big the brain is relative to the body. Specifically, if the animal in question has a bigger brain than you'd expect from an animal of that group. For example, reptiles typically have smaller brains proportionally than mammals, so their EQ is calculated differently. 
When we use this method, T-Rex ranges between 2 and 2.5. In reptilian EQ, that's at the very high end, and is comparable to critters like crocodilians that exhibit complex parental care and can also form long-term bonds with humans. Another promising method is calculating neuron density by scaling from extant taxa, as explained in another one of my videos. When scaling Tyrannosaurus to non-avian reptiles, the amount of neurons in its pallium should be around 445 million. For reference, that's 15 times higher than Argentine tegus, a non-avian reptile that can be trained, form bonds with individual people, and learn their names. When you scale T-Rex's neuron density to birds, which are much more closely related, the number jumps to 3.3 billion, which is only behind chimps and humans. Either way, we're looking at an animal that's far more crafty than you'd expect. After reviewing all of this information about the world's biggest, scariest, and potentially smartest terrestrial carnivore, it's clear that T. rex is called king for a reason. Evolution produced a complex, sophisticated predator with the power of a tank, the senses of a hawk, and maybe even the intelligence of a primate. If I missed anything special about the king of the dinosaurs, please let me know in the comments below. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time on Paleontology Evolved.